Hi guys, in today's tutorial I want to show you how you can build a data tape and what you can use it for. So let's take a look at what I built till now. So we have a little pulse shortener here that will give me a signal to trigger the data tape and right now this one is the only one that's connected and what it does is it goes off and on again. So you could say okay that's nothing different to a T flip flop but when I connect the second one, it's on right now. When I hit the button, it turns off, it stays off, and it goes on. So it's off, off, on. And that repeats all the time. And when I connect then the third one, which is again bigger than the um, second one, as you can see, it's off off, off, on, off, on, off, off, and so on. So it's always uh, on, off, on, off, 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 and then it starts from the beginning. So it's two pulses like the first one, but then it skips a pulse, so it skips the third one. And I can now also connect these to a clock and then we'll see a light sequence which um, always goes in a loop. So we have uh, six different stages in our sequence here and they are looping. The reason why the first one is kind, kind of out of sync, sync is because um, it needs to wait until the dropper fires while the other one uh, only needs to wait for a hopper but normally you would at least have three different uh, stages in your data tape so um, the timing will be like for these two. So I'd say that's enough of demonstration. Let me show you how you can build one of these. For building we want to start with uh, placing our output lamp then two redstone, where it's two redstone I will explain in just a bit and place a comparator. Then going away from the comparator leave a gap of one and then place a dropper. Now you need to think of how many different stages your data tape should have. Uh, since uh, this tutorial is a pre-tutorial for the seven segment display I would do uh, ten um, uh, different stages in my data tape now and because it's an even number I need to place two droppers. If it was an uneven uh, number I could just skip one dropper and um, then go on with the hoppers that I will place right now. First of all you want to place a hopper in each um, dropper facing in from the back and then coming around and uh, filling them up. The amount of hoppers you need is uh, equal to the stages of your data tape. So for example over here I have six different stages so I have six different uh, droppers. Here three and there two and since I want to have um, ten I need to place four more hoppers so just like this and then for activating these uh, we need to place redstone on top of both of the droppers. That's important that uh, the droppers are always uh, covered with redstone. It's unimportant if um, a hopper has redstone above, that doesn't matter, um, but it's important that the droppers got the redstone on top. And then I would just connect it to this one, like this, and now it's time to fill the hoppers. So the way this thing works is that we can see the difference between a non-stackable item like the door and a stackable item like uh, the wooden block here because this only gives a redstone signal of 1 and the door gives a redstone signal of um, 3 and the problem is now that when I try to place in a door in the hopper next to it it will just go over to this slot here so what we need to do is to pre-fill all the slots that the items can't go to the next hopper except we uh, give it a redstone signal. So what we do 
is um, first let's take a look at what signal we want to build in here. Uh, I wrote down the numbers here and we want to do the upper segment, so this one, and the sequence for that is on, off, then two times on, off, and then uh, four times on. So we only have two offs in this um, sequence and we start with the zero. So uh, first we prefill our slots in white and then uh, we want to have it on so we place a door in there. Then uh, we're going um, counter, uh, so against the direction of the hoppers. So this one is now a brown hopper, so we prefer it in brown, and uh, it needs to be off. So we place a normal block in there, and we use a brown normal block to make sure that uh, we don't get confused with the colors. Then we have two times on, so again white with on, then brown with on, then it's off again for the four, so white, and then a white block as off, then brown on, white on, brown on, and then we're coming to the hopper that's next to the dropper, and here we don't need to prefill uh, the hopper because there's no hopper facing into this one, so we can just place in our on item and same for this hopper here you can just place in the door for the 9 and when we now go back to our pulse shortener here we can just give it pulses so right now we are at the 0 when I press it it goes off because it's the 1 then we have the 2 the 3 the 4 is off again 5 6 7 8, 9, 0, and the 1 again, and it's off. So that loops now around, and we could uh, technically do this for each of the segments, but that's something for the next tutorial. I hope that uh, I showed you now how you can build a data type yourself, because you can also use this, of course, for triggering pistons in a, a specific order. So if you have a uh, difficult um, yeah, sequence for pistons, for example for a special door, then you can use the data tape to uh, decode it and you don't have a huge amount of redstone around. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please drop me a like, leave me a comment and share this video with your friends and I will say thanks for watching and until the next video.